Wait, did you press record? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, so here we have a, uh, a resistor and a capacitor. We're going to, at time t equals zero, we're going to close this switch. And what I'll be asking you to draw would be the voltage graph of the voltage across the capacitor versus time and the current graph. Where this is the current. We will stipulate that the in the beginning, the voltage on the capacitor is zero. And the current through the resistor is zero. Okay. So the question is, what happens when you close this switch? Well, the capacitor starts filling up with charge. The resistor limits how fast that happens. This is functionally equivalent to having a big source of water. And a big pool. The size of that pool is C. And so what we're doing is we're opening a valve here and water flows there. So that's the current. We have a voltage on one side of the resistor, 12 volts from the power supply. We also have the voltage across the capacitor. And how much water flows is the proportional to the pressure difference across the resistor, according to Ohm's law. Okay. So Ohm's law says that the current here is equal to the change in voltage across the resistor over the resistance, which equals 12 volts minus delta Vc over R is a thousand ohms. Okay. Does that make sense? It's the pressure difference across the resistor that counts. The amount of current that flows is due to that pressure difference and inversely proportional to the resistance. So what we're saying is I've fixed the size of the pipe I'm filling the pool through this pipe. At time t equals zero, I open the valve, and now water starts flowing. How high will the water flow? To 12 volts. To 12 volts. So this will fill up until we have the same voltage on either side. Then there's no current. That difference is zero, so there's no current. Okay. So we know that over time, long term, I must be at 12 volts here, and my current must be zero way out here. Zero amps, long term. And the shape of these curves is exponential, so we go something like that. Okay. Now, what is the value of tau? It's R times C. So that's 1,000 ohms times 72 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. OK, that's 72 microfarads. That equals, that's a 3, so it is 0 0.072 seconds. Is that correct? Yes. OK. Now, the fact that you multiply ohms times farads and get seconds is crazy. But that's if you actually were to do it, that's what works. So we haven't asked you to do it. But R times C gives you the units of seconds. That turns out to be about one-fifth of the way to the final goal. <clears throat> OK. 
okay? So this would be um, 0 0.072, 0 0.144, 0 0.216, 0 0.288, 0 whatever, 3536 something. Okay, by the time you've gone five tau seconds, you got to where you were going. So we started at zero, we went to 12. After five times tau seconds, I'm within 1% of where I was going, so we call that down. So this takes a little over a third of a second to complete. Does that make sense? How do you, how do you know that it's a fifth of a Well, if you look at an exponential curve of the form that was written, this is, this, uh, these percentages, where you are after 1 tau, 2 tau, 3 tau, 4 tau, are always the same. It's, you know, 37%, 63, whatever, I forget the numbers. But it's always within 1% of the final goal after 5 tau. Okay. And it depends on how big the pipe is and how big the pool is. Not where you started. So the change would be how much water, like pool water? Yeah, delta VC is equivalent to how, what's the height of the water in the pool? Okay, and then for I, we didn't finish that. Tonight. I would be the flow of water from the pool into the, in, from the big source of water into the pool, okay? And that controls how much I there is. Can you draw that for us? Uh, yeah, we can go over here. Yeah, so <clears throat> what's the maximum I? Well, that's when you first turn this on, you have 12 volts here, you have no volts here, so that's the maximum current that can flow. So this will instantly jump up to 12 volts divided by 1,000, 1 1.2 million. Okay, 1.2 million. And then it would drop down while it drops down, the voltage is still going up. You're filling the pool still, but you're filling it slower. Because the pressure Because the pressure difference is getting, going away. Did I get this right? 1.2 milliamps? How did you get that? I divided 12 volts by 1,000 ohms. Yeah. So if you ask us, uh, like, I would not do that. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's 12 million. Oh, it's 12 million? Sorry, so sorry. So 12 million, so it immediately jumps up to 12 million. As I continue to fill the pool, that current goes down and down and down until just as the pool finishes filling, I have no more current. And in both cases, they end at the same time, five time constants after the start of the event. Yes? Um, on the test, are you going to have us do like each individual point, or can we do it like that? Find the maximum so you have Yeah, all I care about on the test is the curves, where you started, where you ended, okay? And the five tau. I'm not going to ask you, you know, what, where are you after one tau and two tau and three tau, okay? I just want to know the overall idea. Huh? Are the curves always going to be exponential, like for both? Yes, the curves are always going to be exponential. This is um, what happens when you have a flow that's dependent on a difference. So as you flow, you're changing the difference. So it's, it's a differential equation of a very classic form, and it always results in this bizarre exponential curve. Yes? Would you maybe have this go backwards instead of it being closed and then the opening? Or uh, yes. So the question was, would we do a discharge? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So would I do a discharge? So um, are we good with closing the circuit and charging this? Yeah. Why is that one dotted? Why is it done? Dotted. This one? Yeah. I don't know. 
Okay. Okay, so now it's charged up. The pool is full. And I open the I open the switch. What happens? It stays, nothing happens. What, what would happen if after the pool is filled up, I close the spigot here? Nothing. The pool's full. Everything's fine. Okay. Now let's add to the circuit though. I'll add a switch here. And that's 5,000 ohms. Okay. And let's say we, uh, we come over here and at some point in time, we're going to say we're going to close this switch. That one's open. This one's closed. What's going to happen? It's going to discharge, and this voltage across this capacitor will drop. Notice how we're disconnected from the 12 volts. The 12 volts isn't in play here anymore at all. That's, this switch is open, so that's gone. And so what will happen is these electrons will come around to their mates on the positive side, and this voltage will collapse down to zero. So if you put a hole in your box, and all water is just coming out? Yes, it's exactly that. I have a tube in my box, and we're emptying the water, and this tube has resistance. If this was R1, we'll call this R2. And I'm emptying the pool through another resistor, through another tube. So let's look at what would happen at that time. What is my initial voltage? 12 volts. And what is my initial current? Well, it's zero. And then I open the spigot. Is it going to be a maximum amount of current or a minimum? Is it going to get more current as time goes on or less? It's going to do just the same thing. It's going to go to a maximum and then come down. So this is I. I should do this in red, huh? OK. And we have 12 volts. That goes down as well to zero. So we start at 12 volts, we end at zero. We have a maximum current. How can we figure out what the maximum current is on this side? The same thing, but these different resistance. Yes, it's the same exact situation. I have 12 volts on this side. The pool was full, so I had 12 volts on this side. On this side, I always have zero volts. And we're going to divide it not by 1,000, but by 5,000. OK. So that equals 0.2 milliamps? 0.02 milliamps? No, 0.2. Well, it's 0.0024. 0.024 milliamps. 2.4 milliamps. That's it. 2.4 milliamps? Yeah, oh, yeah. sure. I had 12 before divided that by 5. Okay. So right here I have 2.4 milliamps. And then it drops down to zero. Why is it 5,000 now? Because the resistor that discharges the, the capacitor, which is emptying the pool, is 5,000 ohms. This resistor that we filled the pool with, it's not even, there can't be any flow of water through it. Because that switches over, I can't, I can't fill it with water. So by closing the switch, you're opening the resistor. By closing this switch, I'm now connecting this resistor 
It's like opening this pipe, this exit pipe. Did you say you connected them all? It would just be like one continuous flow. It wouldn't really matter if you're open. Yeah, we wouldn't do that. Okay. We won't connect them all. What is, before we answer more questions, what's the time constant on this event, emptying the pool? Five. That's 5,000 times 72 microfarad. 0 0.36 seconds. And so how long does the event take? It's that times 5. There's nothing over here. We close this switch. Current flows from this through this resistor, starts filling up the capacitor until the voltage increases to 12 volts. There's no current. The capacitor is fully charged. Then I open this switch, and later I close this switch. Now current flows out of the capacitor, emptying the capacitor. The voltage drops. The current goes down. How long did the filling take? About 0.36 seconds. How long did the emptying take? 1.8 seconds, about five times that. Why was it five? Because this resistor was five times that resistor. This is five times that, so this takes, sorry, this takes five times that to happen. Okay, questions, Mason or not yet? And well, doesn't, doesn't the fact that R2 is 5 times more than R1 already used? Yeah, that's why tau is 5 here is 5 times bigger than tau over here. And then, then yeah. that tau, like times 5, would be the amount of time it took to completely empty the pool? Yes, tau times 5, 0.36 times 5, it takes 1.8 oh, okay. seconds to empty the pool. And that's to, to 1%, to be close enough to Okay? Yes? So if there's wasn't a second resistor and you opened the other, it would discharge. That's right. If this wasn't here and I opened this switch, Nothing. the cap will just sit there. In reality, it won't, but no. in our perfect world, the cap will just sit there and will hold that charge forever. If there's a second resistor or if there's a second opening and it never closes, it won't Correct. It won't. It can't discharge until there's a path around it. Yes. So are, is, are you just going to ask us to just do the graph and find the current and then tau, or is there more to this? Um, no, this pretty much is all encompassing. Is this a coincidence that the point is yeah. seconds? It is a coincidence that this is five times that because this is five. This is five times that. I should have picked some other number. That's a coincidence. Okay, what you hit?